Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm the Trading Chief. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Uh, I cover biopharmaceutical stocks uh, with upcoming FDA reviews, and I also cover stocks that have upcoming mergers. Uh, before we get started and, and go over the the stock that I want to take a look at today, I just if you want to get the alerts and and um, and stock picks that I call out, um, come over and join the Discord. The link will be in the description down below. But here's something that you you can see. I said, keep your eyes on BGLC in the pre-market. I said, I said I have a gut feeling that it's going to explode. I said it was uplisted from an OTC and it was halted most of the day yesterday. I called this Thursday night, um, going into before pre-market, going into uh, Friday morning. So pre-market for me, this I called this at 6:02 p.m. Pre-market for me is 10 p.m. That's when it starts because uh, I live in Hawaii. So I, I called this one out, and then sure enough, if you go over here and look, it started at around 5, basically 5.75. Um, I wasn't paying too close of attention. I ended up catching it. I ended up buying in at 6.80. I, still, I sold at 7.30. That was a mistake. Um I set a stop loss for it, and then I went paying attention and started pushing up, and it hit my stop loss. I bought back in at 8:05, and then I sold again at 8:55, so I profited 100 bucks uh, first thing in the morning off of that. Um, so I also called AMC um, on Friday. One of the members in the Discord asked me; uh, it, it was asking about eight actually. Uh, if I'd heard anything, I said no, but the judge did have an open time frame in her schedule, uh, so we could see something in the after hours, and sure enough, after hours, I looked, and I it was already up. I think I caught it at $4.80 when I alerted the Discord that AMC was moving in the after hours, and then it had its big push up to, I think it was like $9 and some change. And then it you know, came back down to where it's at currently. So that was nice. Um, it was a big day Friday. But today I want to take a look at a uh, biopharmaceutical company that has an upcoming FDA review. Uh, that company is, that company ticker is NBIX. It's Neurocrime Biosciences. Um, just a quick little overview of what what they do and what they're about is Neurocrime Biosciences Incorporated is a neuroscience focused biopharmaceutical company. It discovers, develops, and intends to commercialize drugs for the treatment of neurological and endocrine related diseases and disorders. So, and it's headquartered in San Diego, California. Um, so, let's kind of go over what they have going on. I got to scroll way back to April. 4th. Like April 1st of 2022. So give me just a second to get down there. I had it set up. <clears throat> I guess it reset when I uh, started looking at some other things. So the first news article I, I want to go over briefly just covers their phase three data. I say this in a lot of videos. You always want to look at the phase three data because it gives you an idea of what the FDA is going to be looking at because um, when the company sends in, they send in their phase three data along with some other um, statistics like um, from their from their patients, uh, like their safety data. And it also really depends on who they're partnered with to manufacture the drug for them because if the manufactured partner doesn't meet FDA uh, guidelines, then they're not going to get approved. So, excuse me. So, take a quick overview of this. It says Neurocrime Bioscience presents phase three data for uh, kinetic HD study evaluating valbin valbenazine for Korea associated with Huntington's disease. This is valbenazine met the primary endpoints of significant improvement in Korea's sever, uh, severity versus placebo as measured by the Unified Huntington's Disease Rating Scale, or UHDRS, total maximal Korea TMC score, 
with improvements being uh, beginning in week two. So a pretty quick improvements they seen. So this is going to be an SBLA. Uh, Val, Valbenazin is uh, already approved for another treatment. Um, I just want to put that out there. So clinically meaningful results demonstrated by greater response rates seen by uh, clinicals and patients for valbenazin versus placebo. Valbenazin safety profile has consistent was consistent with the known safety profile. The company plans to submit supplemental new drug application to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Okay, so it, I'm sorry, it's a it's a supplemental new drug application, not an SBLA. Um, Neurocrine Biosciences today announced results from the Phase 3 uh, Kinetic HD study, which demonstrated once daily administration of albenison was associated with significant improvements of chorea associated with Huntington's disease compared with the placebo. These data will be shared as an oral presentation to, uh, Tuesday, April 5th, during the Emerging Science Sessions at the AAN 2022 Great Neuro Reunion Annual Meeting in Seattle, Washington. <clears throat> the Kinetic HD study met its primary endpoints of change in chorea severity using the TMC score of the UHDRS from screening period baseline to maintenance period. Improvement in the TMC score was significantly greater with valbenazin versus placebo with a placebo adjusted mean reduction of 3.2 units versus placebo. Improvements in the TMC score with valbenazin were seen as early as week two and TMC scores continued to improve versus the placebo throughout the dose adjustment and maintenance periods. Secondary endpoints of clinical global impressions of change response uh, status of, and patient global impressions of change response status also significantly favor the valbenazin treatment. Patients achieving much improved or very much improved status were classified as responders. So that is very good news for this drug. Using this classification at week 12, the response rate in the valbenazin group was 42.9% for CGIC compared to 13.2 percent in the placebo group, so you see there's a big, big difference in the, in the, um, in the sampling. Response rate at week 12 for PGIC was 52.7 percent in the valbenazin group and four and 26.4 percent in the placebo. So again, still about 30 percent difference between the two, and the placebo group response rates favoring valbenazin were seen as early as week four for the CGIC and week two for PGIC. The secondary endpoints of neuro, qual upper and lower extremely, extremity physical function endpoints at week 12 were not significantly different between the treatment groups. So there's a lot more here. Uh, I'm not going to read all of this or That'll be a 45 minute long video. So we're gonna move along. You're more than welcome to come back and check all this stuff out. Um, <clears throat> the next news article we're gonna take a look at is from 512. Um, it's not really that significant. It's, they get an orphan drug status designation, as you can see right here. It says, uh, Neurocrine Biosciences receives an orphan drug designation for about valbenazin as a treatment for a chorea associated with Huntington's disease. Um, it says MBIX to, uh, today announced that it has received orphan drug designation from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration for valbenazin as a treatment for Huntington's disease. The treatment of chorea associated with HD is within the scope of the orphan drug designation. In December two, uh, 2021, Neurocrine Biosciences reported top-line data from its Phase three Kinetic HD study evaluating the efficiency, safety, and tolerability of valbenazin, a selective vascular monoamine transporter 2 inhibitor being investigated as a once-daily treatment in adults with chorea associated with um, HD or Huntington's disease. This is, uh, this is from the uh, CEO. 
It says receiving a, an FDA orphan drug designation validates our continued commitment to developing new treatment options that could benefit the lives of patients with the rare diseases, including those impacted by HD or Huntington's disease. We are in the process of completing data analysis from the Kinetic HD and, and the ongoing Kinetic HD studies, which will form the basis of our supplemental new drug application for submission to the FDA later this year. <clears throat> So, um, the next news article we're going to take a look at is from December 22nd of 2022, and basically this one is just saying that the FDA has accepted the supplemental new drug application for Korea associated with Huntington's disease. So the application was approved. Uh, and then the last one we're going to take a look at is from 519. Uh, this one. It says Nirkan sees uh, August FDA action date for Valbenazin for Korea. And this is. Uh, MBIX noted that its supplemental new drug application for biobenison as a treatment for Korea uh, associated with Huntington's disease has an August 20th FDA action date. It says full data from the phase 3 kinetic HD study for the indication has also been published in the Lancet Neurology. Results showed statistically significant improvement in Korea symptoms and improvement in overall Korea severity as early as week two. At 12 weeks, valbenazin treatment resulted in a placebo adjustment mean reduction in the unified Huntington's disease rating scale or UHDRS total maximum Korea uh, TMC score of 3.2 units. Valbenazin is already approved by the U.S. FDA under the brand name Ingriza for Tardive Dyskinesia. I can't pronounce that, but Tardive Dyskinesia. So, as I was saying, it's already approved for another treatment. But anyway, that's all I've got for you. Um, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Um, you know, Come, uh, come check me out in the uh, Discord. As you've seen, we, we drop a lot of good information in there. Um, and that's it. Um, consider hitting that like and subscribe button for me. And that's all I got for you. Have a good night.